Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another exciting, titillating, orgasmic edition of Radical Rock and Record Reviews. And I'm your host, Wild Ride Bassist. And today, guys, I want to talk about one of my favorite bands. A band that's definitely in my top 10 favorite bands of all time. Look at the shirt. You know exactly who we're going to talk about today. Blue Oyster Cult, good old BOC. And I would like to talk to you about two albums. Two albums that I pre-ordered on vinyl back in like late November, early December. And it took a long ass time to get these records. I mean, I didn't get them until maybe like mid February. And I've been holding off on this moment right here to unbox these records with you all, my friends and fans, and for us to be able to see these with each other firsthand. I'm talking about two albums that in the Blue Oyster Cult discography, are very, a lot of people either love them or a lot of people hate them. And these two albums are very underappreciated, especially back when these albums came out, let's say in 1998 and in 2001. So right there with that, you BLC fans know exactly what albums that I'm talking about. I'm talking about 1998's Heaven Forbid. Mm-hmm. 2001's Curse of the Hidden Mirror. Boy, I got these bad boys on vinyl and this is the time. This is the time to unbox these and see what kind of job Frontiers Records did. Now, both these records, like I said, dude, these albums right here were a pain in the ass to get a hold of. Um, I remember Frontiers Records first announced them being reissued on CD and vinyl. It was probably back in like last year, like April or May, right at the beginning of all the COVID-19 madness, you know what I mean? Whenever everything was getting shut down, restaurants were shut down, we were on lockdown, the only thing you could do was, shit, I didn't even go to work for two months. The only thing you could do, really, was go get food at a drive through You couldn't go into restaurants, you couldn't do shit, or you could go to the grocery store. So anyway, Frontiers Records put these things up on pre-order back around April. I think it was like last April, a year ago, pretty much. And I remember I jumped, I was like, dude, I have to have these. Those are the final slots in my Blue Oyster Cult studio album discography vinyl collection. So I put in the pre-order for them. And through all the COVID madness and just, you know, shit getting shipped from Europe to the United States of America during that period of time, not happening. So I was sitting there just waiting, what's gonna happen, what's gonna happen? And finally I got an email months later saying that my order was canceled. And I was like, fuck, ah! So then I had to go back to Frontiers Records, their website, and try to order these again. And guess what? When I did, it said they were unavailable, that they were sold out. So I was bummed, I was like, fuck, well, there goes my chance of getting these albums on vinyl, I have the CDs, I was like, there goes the chance of me finishing my Blue Oyster Cult studio album discography collection on vinyl. And a lot of Blue Oyster Cult fans bitched and complained. A lot of BOC fans, I guess, wrote Frontiers like I did and told them, please do a second issue. Please do a second reissue. And finally, I remember back uh, last November, towards the end of November, early December, Frontiers Records announced, I remember reading it off of uh, Eric Bloom's Instagram page, that Frontiers Records was gonna reissue second pressing of Heaven Forbid and Curse the Hidden Mayor. So dude, I jumped at that chance, got on there and pre-ordered them both. Once again, they get shipped. They get shipped to somewhere in Germany. And they sat there, and I had the tracking number, and I would check it like every week just to see what was going on. And forever, from like pretty much the beginning of December, they sat in like a warehouse in Germany. They just sat there. And here you go, January, nothing. February, nothing. So finally, I wrote Frontiers Records, and I was like, dude, where are my Blue Oyster Cult records? Where's my Heaven Forbid? Where's my Curse of the Hidden Mare? And they said, they like checked the tracking numbers and they said, Mick, we got them. It's just right now with this COVID-19 crap going on, stuff getting shipped from Europe to the US is moving at a snail-like pace. 
I mean, snails don't even move that fast. Snails probably move about that pace. Well, anyway, finally, I said, good. I'm going to get them. It's just going to take fucking forever. So finally, I remember probably around February 23rd, February 24th, February 25th, these bad boys finally showed up to my doorstep. I was so psyched. And now the Blue Oyster Cult, including The Symbol Remains, their new album from last year, my Blue Oyster Cult studio album vinyl discography collection is complete. Now let's talk about these albums real quick. You know, uh, let's see, Heaven Forbid was, um, this was released in 1998 from CMC Records, CMC Records. In the 90s, CMC signed a lot of 70s and 80s hard rock bands and metal bands. In a time wherever hard rock and heavy metal from that time period, from the 70s and 80s, was a bad word, dude. And unless if you were like a huge band, like Aerosmith or Kiss or somebody along that kind of A-leaguers, Van Halen, let's say, like if you weren't one of those kind of bands, you were having a rough time, dude. You were having a rough time and nobody would touch them. So CMC Records, which I don't know what CMC stands for. Can't remember, it's been forever. But I know that CMC Records is known for Cheesy Metal Cemetery. Because that's where a lot of artists went when they were desperate to get a record deal. But nonetheless, CMC, back then in 1998, released Heaven Forbid. And in 2001, uh, they released Curse the Hidden Mirror. Both of these records were totally released um, and came out on deaf ears. Back then, nobody gave a shit. I remember when this came out, because I remember seeing it in the store, record store, the Jefferson Mall here in Louisville, Kentucky, which is now an FYE. But back then, it was Camelot Music. And I remember, you know, because, dude, we will get into my Blue Oyster Cult story whenever I do um, um, the album ranking of them. But, like, Blue Oyster Cult has been in my DNA for years. And I was always curious of this band because I grew up seeing Blue Oyster Cult. I grew up with the pictures of their album covers. The images would burn a hole in my mind. But I was like, dude, you know, I picked the CD up. I was like, all right, Blue Oyster Cult's new album, cool. But I never bought it back then, you know. And then years later, you know, like, like um, I would go to these used CD stores. They're called Book and Music Exchanges here in Louisville. And, dude, I used to see, I swear to God, like four, five, six copies of this used every time. And I would just pick it up and I was like, eh, I'm not gonna get it. I mean, if like four or five CDs are here used, it probably sucks. So I didn't wanna waste the money that I didn't have back then as like a teenager. So I sat on it forever. And finally, actually it was like last year, like, you know, um, when I was getting really, really hyped for um, the release Finally, Blue Oyster Cult was going to release a new album, Civil Remains, last year. Last year, I was Blue Oyster Cult all damn year. Last year for me, 2020 was the year of BOC. And I was like, dude, you know what? I'm curious as hell about these albums. I, I got to hear them, you know? So actually, the CDs, the CMC CDs, if you like look for them online, they're expensive. They're like 20 to 30, 40 bucks original copies. I ended up finding both of them last year, the same day at a place here called The Great Escape for $3 each. I pooped my fucking pants. So I got them and I was like, finally, I'm gonna give these albums a chance and see if they're as bad as kind of the, the uh, you know, is what I've heard of them. And I have to tell you what, I think both these albums are great. I really dig Heaven Forbid. I really dig Curse of the Hidden Mirror. I mean, is it Blue Oyster Cult's best music ever? No. Is it their worst music ever? No way, no chance in hell. Coming up soon is gonna be my Blue Oyster Cult album ranking. And you will see exactly what I think of both of these albums. But I think both these albums are really great. I think it's them kind of going back to their style in the 70s and the early 80s. You know, after kind of hiccups like Club Ninja and Imagine Those. Ugh. But anyway, so thankfully Frontiers Records reissued the CDs, reissued these albums on vinyl. 
and I think they're badass. So first, let's check out, I've been waiting for this, been waiting for you guys. First, let's check out, heaven forbid, there's the album cover. Now, if you look at the album cover to this, which this album cover is not very good. It looks very chinzy and very late 90s, uh, I don't know, just computer graphics. It's very kind of cheesy and stupid, but you know what, hang on, ah, here it is. So here's the uh, here's the CD, the original CMC International CD. Okay, look at the album cover. The album cover is really bright, and the deformed-looking dude's face is kind of real bright. You know, it's kind of like there's like a light shining on him. I think that's awful looking, awful. But then Frontiers took a shitty album cover, and it's still shitty, but they made it better looking. See how they darkened? They added some blue and white to his face and they kind of darkened and made it more of like a shadow around him. Look at the difference. See that? I think the Frontiers Records one is much better looking and I might even pick up that version of the CD. I don't know, I might. I have to read about it and see if it was remastered or any kind of thing like that. Cause it's kind of expensive too for CD. But anyway, there's the front cover. I think the bluish white kind of more ghoulish album cover is better than that. So good job on that, Frontiers Records. They even saw it and was like, dude, we, we gotta do something about this. And there's the back, you know? There's the back, there's the spine, and the tracks on this. Side A, I'd like to see you in black. Track number two, classic DOC Harvest Moon. Track number three, Power Underneath Despair. Track number four, song that's playing in the background right now, X-Ray Eyes. Number five, have a back, have a back, don't keep that safety on. Have a back, have a back. Uh, number six, Damaged. Number seven, a really great song called The Cold Gray Light of Dawn. That's a classic BLC. Track number eight is Real World. Track number nine is Live For Me. Track number 10 is one of the heavier BOC songs in their catalog, Still Burning, which is like a sequel to Burning For You. And track number 11 is like a live acoustic rendition of MD from Mirrors. So yeah, that's cool. So let's bust open, heaven forbid. Got the guitar pick. Gotta find the slit on down the line. Like old Jerry Rafferty, right down the line. All right, so check it out. Oh, hang on. This is a. Hang on. Man, finding the slit on this is kind of difficult. That's what she said. All right, so anyway, I'm not going to try to do anything fancy with this. I'm taking the shrink off. There's no hype stickers on these. Let's see if I can get a good. No. Oh, there you go. All right, so check it out. Very good, glossy. Uh, sleeve and jacket. Check that out. I love it. Dude, that album cover. Try to get the glare out of the way. Look at that. That album cover looks really badass. You know, really cool. Then you open up a gatefold. A very cool gatefold with just the lyrics. Very cool. Very cool. Here's the back. Yeah, Frontiers Records. Uh, was it 2020? There you go. There's the cool kind of hologram uh, Frontiers sticker that they always put on it. So, yeah front took a shitty album cover and made it a lot better there's the gatefold i've been waiting to see this man i can't wait to listen to it can't wait to you know just get into this man i love some boc so there is the the dust sleeve just kind of a just a very glossy kind of paper white and let's share out the vinyl cool feels about 140 it's awesome there's the cool kind of uh, center ring with the album cover on it. Pretty sweet, I dig it, black. It's got a little white smudge on it. I'll have to see that. It's got a little bit of a white smudge on it. I have to clean that off. So yeah, it's about 140, 140 gram, that's cool. I mean, as long as the jacket looks good and the record plays and is in good shape, I don't give a shit. So yeah, there it is, check it out. Lords to Cold, heaven, heaven Forbid, an excellent album. Underrated as hell, dude. If you have not heard this, if you back then in the 90s and 1998 did not give Lords to Cold a chance, 
Listen to this album. I mean, I look at the track listing. I don't really see any duds on this album. Like I said, is it their very best? No. Is it the worst? No. I think it's a very good, solid 90s release, you know. I just wish that Blue Oyster Cult would have released more music from the 90s through the 2000s and stuff. But you know what? They came back strong last year with my favorite album of the year in 2020, The Symbol Remains. God, that album fucking rules. And this album rules too. But we will talk about all that stuff in the upcoming Blue Oyster Cult album mm -hmm. ranking series. So next we're gonna do from 2001, uh, Curse the Hidden Mirror, which I also recall um, when this album came out. I remember seeing this CD when it came out at Walmart actually. And once again, I remember picking it up and being like, Blue Oyster Cult's got a new album, cool. I thought it had a cool album cover. I was curious as hell about it, but you know, being a 16 year old kid with no job and you know, doing my thing I was doing back then, which I'm not gonna talk about. You know, I was just your typical rambunctious uh, rock and roll teen back then. I didn't buy it. But then I remember maybe like five years later, my dad bought this used at a local uh, awesome, the greatest record store in Louisville history called Erectasy. Uh, my dad bought this album used probably five years later and we actually really liked it. I thought it was a really good solid album. Never ever thought this or heaven forbid to see a vinyl release or a reissue. So yeah, there's the front. Uh, there's the back. There's the spine for all you geeky dudes that like spines like me. And the title track, okay? This feels like it's a, see like that's, let's heaven forbid is on one record. I think Curse the Hidden Mirror, it feels like it might be on two. So you got side A, Dance on Stilts, Showtime, The Old Gods Return, which is probably my favorite track on this album. Side B is Pocket, One, one Step Ahead of the Devil, One Step Ahead of the Man. I just like to be bad. If I had to pick one song off this album that I really don't care for, it would be I Just Like to Be Bad. I hate the Leonard Dusty was a secretary. My chick didn't get married. I did not really like that. Here Comes That Feeling is awesome. Uh, Out of the Darkness is a badass tune. Stone of Love is cool. Eye of the Hurricane is cool. Good to Feel Hungry, pretty good. This album was produced by Buck Dharma with associate producer Eric Blum. So let's check it out. <clears throat> Yeah, both these, actually today when me and my son Grayson were out riding around, we listened to, out um, in the car today, we we like listened to Blue Oyster Cult, Symbol Remains, which my son loves that album. He loves the song Fight. Then with Grayson's Choice, we listened to Alice Cooper, Detroit Stories. And then we listened to this in the car. And it, once again, very solid album. I think it, I think it's pretty killer. I mean, it's got a dud or two on. It's not a perfect album, but it's it's good BOC. And good BOC is a lot better than a lot of shitty bands best. So there's the front, the back, the very, once again, a very glossy, glossy uh, sleeve and jacket. I like that the Frontiers Records does. This is cool. So you open up the gatefold. Man, it's got those weird ass pictures. Of those of the Curse of the Hidden Mirror dudes. Check it out. It's kind of cool. Check it out. Check it out. All the lyrics. So you got the songwriting credits along with it. Yeah, Dance on Stilts was written by Donald Rosaire, Buck Dharma, John Shirley, which I know John Shirley is like a science fiction author or something. And I know um, that he wrote a lot of lyrics on Heaven Forbid, Curse of the Hidden Mirror, and Civil Remains. So yeah, here, once again, pretty cool. Just kind of that glossy white paper sleeve. And uh, yeah, about 140 once again. So there's the center ring for side uh, A. Side B center ring, pretty cool, I dig it. This almost feels a little heavier. I don't know. I have to compare them, but I think Curse of the Hidden Mirror might be, because it's a longer album, it might be on 180. I don't really know why that would matter, but 
Uh, but I know that the weight of the vinyl, I like it sounds a lot better on a heavier weight vinyl or record. And then, you know, I'm not gonna take it out, but uh, so there's the center ring on da, 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 side D. There's the center ring on side C. So there you go, guys, an unboxing. I can finally check these out and listen to them and just stare at them and just oh, love it, dude. I love it. I love Blue Oyster Cult and I love having their whole complete studio album discography on vinyl. Love BOC and these albums are so underappreciated, so underrated. Give them a shot, man. Give them a shot. Which one of these I like better? I honestly don't know, man. I honestly don't know. I want to think that I might be a little bit bigger fan of Heaven Forbid. But dude, Curse the Hidden Mirror ain't no joke either. It's very cool, very cool. The song, check out if I had to pick favorite songs from both of these albums. Check out uh, Cold Gray Light of Dawn off of Heaven Forbid. And check out The Old God's Return off of Curse of the Hidden Mirror. Or Curse of the Hidden Mirror. So yeah, blow us to cult badass stuff and thank you frontiers records for reissuing these and finally getting them to me after one failed attempt and uh you know just the madness of shipping stuff from europe to the united states of america so guys i hope you all are having a great weekend it's friday night i'm feeling all right my motorcycle and a switchblade night so guys i uh, hope you guys are just have a good weekend crank up the tunes Tip you back some cold ones. Spend time with your children, your brothers, your sisters, your friends, your family. Whatever you do, whatever makes you happy, you do it this weekend. And have a really good fucking time. And I will be seeing you. It's coming up here soon. Because I'm going to try to knock out these episodes a little faster, a little more frequently. But And with work and just everything going on right now, it's been hard. But I'm going to do it for you guys. So yeah, thank you all for tuning in. Don't forget to check out my band Wild Ride, W-I-L-D-R-Y-D-E on Facebook, official Wild Ride at Instagram. Uh, check out our band camp for the City Streets Remaster CD, awesome t-shirts, stickers, patches, trucker hats, tube tops for your hot ladies and the titties. Just check out Wild Ride, guys. We're on all streaming websites, Spotify, YouTube, uh, Amazon Music, all that stuff. Or you can just go old school by the CD. We'd appreciate it. So you guys have a great time, and uh, I'll see you later. Ah. Peace, guys. <laughs>